What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how we can bring VDBs into Unreal Engine 5. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And before we get started with the tutorial, I want to give a big shout out to Thabalt Lambert. He's the developer of this plugin. So make sure you show him some love on Twitter as he's been developing this plugin for Unreal Engine 5 that makes it available for us to bring the VDBs into Unreal Engine. And so to get started, he actually made this plugin available for free through GitHub. And so I'll leave this link down below. But if you go to the GitHub, it has instructions on how to use it. But I figured a video tutorial might be suffice because a lot of people have been asking me how to use this. So if I scroll down here, you should see the section right here. It's called installation. And this is actually where he's going to be releasing the plugins and the updates and everything. So you just want to click on right here where it says releases. And you can see four days ago, he actually compiled a new release for version five here. So as of right now, this is the latest version 0.3.1. So you just want to click on this and then down here where you see the zip file, you would just click on this and it's going to download your zip file there. So once you have the zip file downloaded, you want to extract it. And then I'll show you right now where you can put it inside your Unreal Engine folder on your C drive. So right now I'm in Windows Explorer. I have Unreal Engine on my C drive. You might have it somewhere else, but you should have this folder called Program Files. You just want to find where you have Unreal Engine installed, which would be under Epic Games. And then I'm going to come right here under version five and then under here where it says engine, double click on that. And then you should see a folder that says plugins. So if you double click on this, you can see where all your plugins are right here. And all you have to do is basically click and drag it into here, which you see I have it right here under sparse volumetrics. And so you just click and drag it into that folder and you should be good to go. Once you open up Unreal Engine 5, it is going to ask you to compile. But let me show you the steps to get into that. So I'm actually going to close this out and I'm going to come over to my Epic Games launcher. And once here, I'm actually just going to launch Unreal Engine 5 like so. And again, if this is your first time opening it with the plugin, it might take a few minutes because it has to compile everything within the plugin. So just give it some time. And then it's going to open up the Unreal Engine project browser in which I'm just going to come right here to the template. This is film, video and live events. I'm going to click on blank. I'm just going to put it to my desktop project name. I'm just going to name it VDB underscore tutorial. And then this is important too. I want to turn on ray tracing. The reason that I want to turn on ray tracing, because it's going to automatically enable everything for path tracing, which I'll show you here in a little bit. It's very important that we have path tracing on if you want to get some of the temperature from some of your VDBs, in which I'll show you that in a couple of steps here. But for now, just make sure you have ray tracing turned on. And then I'm going to click on create. And again, if this is your first time using the plugin, it might take a couple of minutes to compile everything on the back end, but just give it a few moments and it should open up no problem. Okay, so we have Unreal Engine 5 opened up right here. So I'm just going to click on update. And then from here, I'm actually going to come over to edit and down to plugins. And then I just want to search for VDB. So you want to make sure you have all plugins selected, search for VDB, and you'll see that it should come up if you installed it correctly. So I'm going to turn this on and this message is going to pop up. We just want to click yes. It's just letting you know that this is actually in beta right now. And so you're going to have to restart it once you enable it. So I'm going to hit restart like so. And we're just going to give it a few moments to restart again. And while I'm waiting for Unreal Engine to restart, I actually want to show you the first download that we're going to use for our VDB example. This is a free download from my friend EJ over at iDesign. He released a VDB cloud pack that you could download absolutely free. And so for this first step, I'm going to just show you how we can bring in the VDBs as a still image using the cloud pack as so. So if you come over to the link and I'll actually link this down below, you can see that he made this cloud pack using Cinema 4D. These examples are used on Redshift, but I'm going to show you how we can bring his VDBs into Unreal Engine 5 using this plugin. So again, you just want to come over here to download free VDB cloud pack and you should be good to go. So once you have that downloaded and you have Unreal Engine back up, I'm actually going just to delete some of these items in here like so. So I think I could delete my reflection capture as well. So I'm just going to leave that in there for right now. It's not really that important. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually get onto my Windows Explorer. I'm going to pull open the iDesign VDB Cloud Pack. And you can see it has some stills in here that kind of show you what the different cloud formations look like. I'm actually going to use this one, just Cloud 01. So I'm going to scroll down till I see my VDBs. And actually let me bring it over like so. Because I'm just going to click and drag this into my content browser and you can see that we have these VDB import options that pop up. I actually don't want to import a sequence on this because I know it's just a still. So I'm going to click that off. 
For a quantization type, I'm gonna leave it at none just because these volumes aren't too large. If you have a really large volume, you might wanna come down to maybe like four or eight just to kind of compress it a little bit so we can run it in real time in Unreal. But for this one, I think we should be good with none. So I'm gonna click import here and you can see how quick and fast that one was in particular because this file size isn't too big. So for this one, just for a still, it's as easy as just click and drag it into your scene let me zero out, double click on it just to kind of make it center. And you can see now we have a VDB cloud inside of Unreal Engine. And so this is by default. It has this texture on here that we can easily swap out. So if I come up here and then come down to volumetrics under material, you can see that we have an unlit material on here. If we want to have a lit material on here, I'm just going to click on this little folder that has a little magnifying glass. I'm going to click on this. And this is going to bring up some more options that the developer put in here for us. And so for this example, I'm actually going to come over to default lit. I'm just going to click and drag this into the folder there. And now you can see we have some lit clouds in here and we're actually going to be able to control it with the light source here. So if I click on my light source, let me scroll up a little bit. Let me maybe zero some of this out and just scroll through. And you can see the light actually shining through our cloud and everything like so. And that's basically it. So you just have to come down here, play with the attributes and, you know, kind of dial in the cloud how you want it. You can come over here, click on my cloud again, come back down here to my details panel. If I want to add more density to this, maybe let's bring it up to five. You can see we have more density in the cloud now, like so. So I would just say, come down here, play with some of the attributes, definitely go through some of the documentation on what does what until you find something that you're happy with. And for this next example, I actually want to show you how we can bring in an animated VDB into Unreal Engine with this plugin. And for this example, I'm actually going to be using some of the VDBs that Embergen just released this morning. If you click on the link here, again, I'll leave this down below, but they literally just released this this morning. We have some really cool VDBs in here. The one that I downloaded was this tornado. It's actually a looping tornado that they made out of Embergen. But if you go to the link, you can see we have a bunch of really cool VDBs in here that they made with Embergen and they're releasing absolutely free. So again, I would just go through here, play with some of these VDBs since you can. But again, for this example, I'm going to show you guys how we can bring the tornado looping into Unreal Engine. So let me minimize this. I'm actually going to go back to my Windows Explorer and I'm going to find the tornado VDB. And I'm just going to click and drag it into my content browser here. And here you can see we have a few options here. It says import a sequence. We saw that before. It's automatically going to tell us how many frames are within the sequence. So we don't have to change that if you don't want to. For the quantization type, I'm actually going to bring this maybe in at eight. Because when I tried this before at, you know, no quantization, it actually was giving me a little bit of hiccup there and lag whenever I brought it into my sequencer. And so I was able to get better playback whenever I use eight. So I'm just going to import it like so and give us a few minutes to download all the frames in here. OK, so it looks like everything imported. So right here I have my tornado sequence. I'm just going to click and drag this into my scene like so. And then I'm going to come over here to my details panel scroll up a little bit on the right hand side here and i'm just going to zero out my location you can see rotation came in at negative 90. i'm just going to zero that out like so and now you can see we have our tornado in here i can move it up a little bit like so so now you see we have this in here it's not animated or anything and that's because we have to add a timeline into our scene which is our sequencer and so in order to do that i'm going to come over here where we have the clipboard i'm going to click on a down arrow and i'm just going to add a level sequence like so I can name this one tornado if you want to like that and click on save. And now we have a sequencer in here. So this is pretty easy. All we have to do is take our VDB right here. I'm just going to click and drag that into my sequencer. And if I scroll, you can see we still have no animation and that's because we have to input some of that VDB data into there. So I'm going to make sure I'm back on frame zero. It's important that you're on frame zero here. I'm going to click on this track. And right here, we're under transform where it says VDB sequence. We want to add it right here. And as you can see, as we scroll through here, it's actually animating. So let me actually bring it all the way to the last frame here. I'm going to click on right here to end it. And then I'm going to make it loop because this is a loopable file. And I'm just going to click play. And you can see it's running inside of our viewport here, which is really, really cool. 
And so that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to get your animated VDBs in here. It's quick and easy. Again, you could go back and play with some of the material packs that's included in here. Or if you go through the documentation, you can actually add your own material packs as well. And so in step three, I want to show you guys how we could bring an explosion, how we could use the temperature to actually control the color and everything of the explosion. So let me get that set up here for you as well. And so for this final example, I'm actually going to be using the pack from the Pixel Lab. This is actually a paid pack, but it's pretty good. If you come over to this link, which I'll leave down below, you can see I'm using the VDB Explosion Pack Volume 3. This could be used for anything, whether you're using like Redshift, Octane, Arnold, etc. I want to show you guys how we could use this inside of Unreal Engine 5. And of course, if you buy anything from the Pixel Lab, please use my link because it definitely helps out the channel here. And so I'm going to be using one of these Explosion Packs, as I said. So let me close this out. Let me open up my Windows Explorer. And I'm going to be using this one that's called Gasoline Explosion. I'm just gonna click and drag this into my scene here. And you can see we actually have more options here now. So now we can bring in the density, we can bring in the flame, and we can bring in the temperature. So I'm gonna bring in all three just so I have it. But again, I'm gonna come over here and maybe go to FP4 for my quantization type like so. And then it's 130 frames. So everything else here looks good. I'm just gonna click import and let this import into Unreal Engine 5. All right, so we have our VDB imported into Unreal Engine 5. For this one, we're gonna import it a little differently. We're not gonna click and drag because there's a different way that we wanna be able to bring in the color temperature into our VDB. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna come over here where we have the cube with the plus sign. I'm gonna click on this. Now I wanna come down to here where it says all classes. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna click and drag this all the way down. And it's actually this one right here. So VDB Research Actor, we wanna bring this one in right here. So again, that's VDB Research Actor. Click on this, and then you see it's just gonna end up in our viewport. I'm just gonna center this out. And let me scroll this up so it's a little bit easier to see because we wanna come down here to where it says volumetric in the tab. Now this is the important part because we wanna make sure we associate the right file with the right sequence here. And so right here where it says VDB density, I'm just gonna click on where it says none. And then I'm gonna look for the one that says density right here. So if you hover over it, it's gonna actually make it larger in a viewport so you can see it down there. So there's no mistakes. So this one is actually density. So I'm gonna click on this one. And then I wanna come down here where it says temperature. I'm gonna click on this. And I want to make sure I click on the appropriate one, which is temperature. So I'm going to click on this one right here. And then the next step from here is this is only going to work within the path tracing for now. So we want to make sure we activate that so we can see it inside our viewport. Remember when we opened up this file and we created it at first, I said make sure you click on ray tracing because that's going to automatically enable path tracing for us. And so in order to get to the path tracing, you're just going to come over here to where it says lit. And right under here, you should see path tracing. So all you have to do is click on this and it's gonna activate it within a viewport. You should see everything go black like so. And then let me pull this up a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make another sequence. So I'm gonna click on this clipboard, hit the add level sequence. And I'm just gonna leave this one as the default name. So I'm gonna click on save. Now I have a sequence in here. And if I come back over here to my world outliner, Right here where it says VDB Research AC, I'm going to click and drag that into here. And right here where it says Track, I'm going to left click on this and I want to bring in the density first. So right here under Components, I'm going to click on Density Sequence Component like so. And then right here, you should have it come underneath. You'll see Density Sequence Component again. I want to click on the track that is associated with this one. So I'm going to left click on the track and I'm going to bring in the VDB Sequence. Now, if I scroll through, you should see it starting to play through there a little bit. Actually, let me play it. Now you can see it playing through like so. I can actually change my light source a little bit. So I just changed out my rotation there to negative 46. We can actually see it better within our viewport. You can see it playing there. Again, this is path tracing, so it's not going to be real time. Let me actually come to the end here and end this off. But as you notice, it's only giving us the density. It's not giving us any of the explosions. So we don't have any yellows or we don't have any emission in there. So in order to do that, we have to add the temperature, which I'm gonna come back over here to VDB research, click on this track, and I'm gonna add the temperature sequence component here. So I'm gonna click on this. And just like before, you wanna make sure you're on temperature sequence component, click on track, and then I wanna add a VDB sequence. Now, if I play it through, 
now you can see we have some of the explosion in there like so in order to get you know the different color variations that you might want in there let me play this through a little bit so you see it looks good but maybe we want this cloud to be a little bit more gray so i'm going to come over here the vdb research actor pull this up a little bit and if i scroll down underneath my volumetric you can see we have some more attributes here i'm going to click on color maybe let's make this a little bit more gray then if i scroll through here let me actually play through here there you go you can see our explosion is starting to look a little bit better if i come under emission color maybe let's make this a little bit orangish so i'm going to maybe click on this like so let me play through again and there you go so you can see that our explosion is starting to shape up here again this is path tracing so it's going to look better once you render it out this is not going to look great inside the viewport but the last thing that i want to do is bring my temperature all the way up because this is going to be controlled by my temperature here so i'm just going to scroll all the way up let me play through again and there you go so now you can see our explosion is getting controlled by the temperature vdb set there it's looking really cool and then once you render it out it's going to look fabulous so again for this one, we don't want to use it for like any gameplay or anything. This is mostly going to be used for cinematics, but it's also only in alpha as he only started to develop this plugin. So I can't wait to see how far this actual plugin gets as he starts to develop it even further. So hopefully this helped you out. Again, I would go to the documentation because there's a lot more information in there. I basically just wanted to get you guys set up so that you can take it as far as you want to take it. So if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe leave me a big thumbs up and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care what up what up Wimbush here